you don't, if you guys don't know me, my name's Anna Longnecker. I, um, but I just wanted to like have the opportunity because we've been talking about authenticity the past few weeks. I just wanted to kind of share my story and how authenticity has been super, super important in my life, even though I haven't really realized it until we've been talking about this series, but it has been really important. Um, but it kind of starts when I was born, obviously. Uh, but I was pretty much out of the womb into the church. I have been going to this church since before I could walk and talk and everything. And if you guys didn't go to Sunday school here, you guys missed out. They had the best snacks, and I missed them every day. They were the best, um, but that's beside the point. But anyways, as I got older into kind of going to church and my whole church journey, I kind of just thought of church as a checklist, something I needed to just check off a list, something that happened every week and nothing really came from that. I went on Sundays, maybe I went on Tuesdays or Wednesdays uh, for like another Bible study, but that was it. And it didn't follow me into school or sports or anything like that. It was just Sunday and Wednesday and that was it. Um, and so I kind of just thought that being a Christian is going to church and participating in Bible study and knowing Bible verses and praying before meals. And if that was the definition of being Christian, I was a perfect Christian. I went to church every Sunday. I prayed before every meal. I knew so many Bible verses. So I was a perfect Christian and I thought I was. But as I got older, I realized this is not true. Um, but I didn't, because I didn't really have that like understanding, it wasn't a big thing in my life. So when I went into high school, um, I went to a really, like, a bigger high school than my middle school, and I didn't really have any friends. I went into my high school knowing, like, two people. One was my brother, and he was a year older, so he didn't really count. And then the second guy, he just, like, went to middle school with me, and I wasn't really super close with him. And so I just had to make all new friends. And I found this group of friends that I thought I liked, and I thought they'd be nice and whatever. So I started becoming friends becoming friends with them but pretty much the first three four weeks of or three four months of high school I just sat back and I watched how people acted and I watched what they talked about and how they acted around other people and everything that and then I just became one of them I wasn't myself I wasn't authentic to myself to any, anybody else I just became a copy of them so whatever they started talking about I would talk about whatever their opinions were my opinions were the same and I just started acting differently and acting like uh, these other people at my school and it really started a conflict because it was so different than what I was and who I was at home and at church and everything like this so it kind of like separated my life very very distinctly it separated my life and over here I had my school friends and I acted differently around them and I talked a certain way and I acted a certain way and then I had my church friends and my family and I acted so differently again around them and it was like polar opposites and I kind of just had this wall between my life that I just built up and built up and built up. I put in so much into this that it like built this wall in between my church and my school, or my church and my family, and then my school friends and how the, I acted at school. And um, I started to put more into my high school friends and my high school sports. And I started to just pour so much into them. And the more I hung out with them and the more I talked with these friends, like I said, the more I became them. And it started to really influence other things, other parts of my life. And I started acting differently and acting like these other people who were not as nice. And they liked to talk about other people in not a positive way. And this became really impactful to my other life. And it started to almost break down this wall. And I, it like took over my life in a way. Whereas my church and my family, I didn't put anything into it, so I didn't get anything out of it. I just went to church, and I answered questions, and I came home, and that was it. It didn't follow me. It didn't, it didn't bring any other perspectives into my life when I was at school or at sports or anything like that. Um, but I realized kind of the more I was putting into this, I wasn't getting as much out of it. I was putting in so much effort into these friends, but I wasn't getting any love back from these friends. So I started to really like question, are these the right people? Are these my friends that I'm actually, that I should be friends with? Because I'm not getting any love back from them. So I kind of reassessed and I again stepped back and I looked at more what they talked about and how they acted. Instead of just doing what they did, I now kind of put my authentic self into it and really, really thought about how they were acting, what they were talking about. 
And the more I did that, the more I realized that they had no positivity. They talked bad about every person they encountered. Um, they talked bad about teachers, other friends, people that were in the friend group too, which really confused me. Because it was like we were all together, we were all talking about this one person or whatever, and then somebody leaves, and immediately we're talking about how much we don't like that person. And I was like, what? Like, I thought we were friends with them. And so I started to realize, what happens when I leave the room? If I leave the room, what are they talking about now? Because if they never talk about positive things, are they talking positively about me? Or are they negatively talking about me and all the things that I've done wrong and all the things that, why they shouldn't like me and why nobody should like me? And I started thinking about this. And when I thought about this, I was like, I don't really want to be a part of that anymore. But if I'm not friends with them, then I have nobody else. Because I didn't put anything into church, and I didn't put anything into like anybody outside of these friends. So I was like, I have two options here. I can keep being friends with them and not being authentic, or I can stop being friends with them and I can have no friends. And I was somebody in freshman year where if I didn't have, I did not want to be that person that didn't have friends, because that was the most embarrassing thing if you had no friends, because you were the one sitting alone and nobody liked you and you were alone. And for me as a junior, two years later, to be like, you know what, I think I'm okay with that. I think I'm okay with being that one who doesn't really have any friends because I think that's better than having friends that aren't authentic and that are two-faced and that are going to talk behind your back and do all these things to upset you and really make you not feel loved. So I started to drift away from them. I had less and less classes with them and started to just not hang out with them as much. And I felt two things. One, I'm really lonely right now and I don't really know where to go, and I don't really know what to do. But I also felt this like peace, this weird peace of, you know what, it's okay. I have what I have. You know, I don't have these friends anymore, but I think that I'll be okay. And I kind of hit this place where I was like, I don't really know what to do, so I might as well give this whole Jesus thing a chance. Yes, I had grown up in the church, but I had never actually fully committed myself to God. Yes, I've been baptized, but I haven't fully committed myself and said, you know what, Jesus, I do want a relationship with you. And so I was finally, like, talking to him. And I was like, hey, like, God, I don't really know where I'm at. I don't really know what to do. I'm kind of lost. I'm really lonely right now. It'd be great if you could give me somebody. You know, and I was like, I just, I want somebody to talk to. And he answered my prayer. And he gave me friends. And he gave me people I could talk to at church and in other aspects of my life. And I got these friends who just like loved me back the way that I would love them. And it was really this authentic relationship between me and them because I gave them love and they gave me love. And it was this real kind of relationship where I could talk to them about anything and I could pray with them and it was amazing. Um, and then I started to dig a little deeper and I started to read my Bible a little bit. And there were a few verses that um, have really stuck out to me. And the first one is 1 Timothy 4.12. That says, don't let anyone look down upon you because you are young. Instead, set an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. And I'm not going to really go into each one of those, but I kind of was thinking about me, myself, and this verse. I was young. Did I let people look down on you because I was young? A little bit, yeah. I said, I'm too young. I don't really need a relationship with the, the Lord. And there was another part where I, these friends, they didn't have a relationship with the Lord, these school friends, so why do I? And this was before that I started to really connect with him. And so after, when I'm looking at this verse, I'm saying, that was not me, but I'm going to change now because I want an authentic relationship with myself. I want an authentic relationship with others. And more importantly, I want an authentic relationship with the Lord. And I really started thinking about this and just kind of putting all my energy into these things. You know, the way I present myself, the way I love others, the way I have faith in Jesus and this relationship with the Lord. The other one, um, the other verse that I had is Psalms 37, 4, which is, take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. This verse, when I had found it, I don't remember how I found it, but I found it and I was like, wow, this is really amazing because that's what I did. I took delight in the Lord and I prayed to him and I was like, hey, I'm lost right now. I need somebody. And when he gave me those people and when I read that verse, it was, they were connected. And it was amazing because I had prayed and he had answered. 
And that's the perfect situation, you would think, right? Because I prayed, and he answered, and it was good. But what I didn't realize was that sometimes you're going to pray, and you're not going to get back what you wanted. Because before, I had prayed that I just wanted to keep these friends, and I just wanted to change these friends. But he didn't give me that, and he gave me something better. So sometimes you have to look at life from a different perspective and really think about, okay, he didn't give me this, but what is he doing? Because he didn't put me in those classes to be with those friends. And he started to pull me back out of social media and pull me back out of connecting with them to give me these other friends. And when I realized that, it was like life changing. Because I was like, oh my goodness, he's real. Because he gave me what I took delight in. I took delight in the Lord, and he gave me the desires of my heart. And another thing with this verse, um, I was talking to my mom a few, I guess it was like months ago now, um, and I was looking in her Bible, and this was actually the verse that she dedicated to me when I was born. She dedicated a verse to my brother, me, and my sister when we were all born, and this was um, the verse that she had given me. And that full circle moment, again, was like life-changing because I was like, oh my goodness. I should have just done this from the beginning. But sometimes we can't just always do things right the first way, and we have to go back, and we have to change our perspective a little bit to really become an authentic person. Um, and a few things that I've like learned in the past few years, in the past few months and weeks talking about authenticity, is um, being authentic with yourself is just as important with being authentic, or as being authentic with others, meaning if you're not authentic with yourself, you're not going to be authentic with others. You have to find out who you are as a person. You have to find out your own definition of authentic because there's so many different definitions. It could be real. It could be original. You could do consistency. There's so many different versions of authentic, and you have to choose which one you're going to really take on. And you're going to take that on as yourself, and you're going to put that into your relationship with others. And that's how you're going to get these friends that are going to love you back. And this is how you get an authentic relationship. But more important than yourself and others, not that you're not important, but more important is having a relationship with Jesus. Because having an authentic relationship with Jesus will bring you peace and comfort in your life. Genuine, honest, authentic peace and comfort. And this is something, like I said, that I felt. I felt peace which is something that we don't really feel, maybe I'm wrong, but this is something that I don't feel very often outside of God. I never felt this feeling of peace, of, you know what, it is going to be okay. I don't really care, because God's got it. This feeling of he can do it, and I don't have to worry, was such a big feeling. Because when you're alone, all you kind of want to know is somebody's there. And I had this feeling with him as I started to, really dive deep into this relationship with the Lord, I really felt this peace and this genuine comfort. And it now does follow me. It's not just, church is not just Sunday and Wednesday. Church is all the time. Because what church has brought me has been good relationships and has been a true and authentic relationship with the Lord. And something that you'll notice if you have an authentic relationship with the Lord is that he is with you. The Holy Spirit is now in you, and you will carry him through every aspect of your life, whether that's school, whether that's sports, whether it's stuff at home, stuff at school, whatever it is. He's always going to be there, and he's going he's gonna to be with you and follow you wherever you go. And that's how you get that peace. It's like a never-ending circle. Um, and it also like broke this wall in between my, me, or my, my school and my f um, friends at church. It broke this wall. And it just really made me think about myself as an authentic person. And it said, I'm not going to pretend, I'm not going to mold myself to the whatever people are doing at school. I'm going to be myself, and I'm going to find the people that I need because I'm myself. And that's really like what has like deepened my relationship with the Lord. Because if I can have this feeling of peace and comfort in my life, that I know will never go away and that he's always with me, then why do I need anything else? I don't need to worry about my friends. I don't need to worry about my grades. Yes, they're important, but 
if you have a true and genuine relationship with the Lord, then you don't really have to worry about those other things. And that's where I'm going to end today. Um, we'll split up in a minute, but I'm going to pray for us really quick, and then we can split up. Uh, dear Lord, I just want to lift this group up to you that they came tonight, um, and they were just able to look at a story of a high schooler in working in this life as a teenager together. And Lord, I just want to pray for them in their weeks that they can just go out and live a little like you and love a little like you and that they can just really find this feeling of peace and comfort that I have found with you. And I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.